Uh, welcome to It's Only TV But I Like It, the show that must have sinned terribly in a former life. <laughs> they say television is killing the art of conversation, to which I reply, Shh, I'm trying to watch Changing Rooms. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. On my left, the straight one, team captain, Mr. Jack D. And joining Jack this week, an ex-paratrooper turned actor, an interesting background that made for fun and games the first time a fellow actor told him to break a leg. Please welcome Mr. Tim Healy. And completing the team, a regular presenter of Top of the Pops, where she's easy to spot, she's the only one who isn't miming. Please welcome Jane Middlemiss. Opposing Jack, the man known in my house simply as gay, Julian Clary. <laughs> With Julian, the man who's so smooth he's got his own widget, please welcome Mr. <laughs> Nigel Hayes. <laughs> and completing the team, she's the anchor of GMTV, not to be confused with Eamon Holmes, who's often been called something similar. <laughs> <laughs> please welcome Lorraine Kelly. It's time now for me to ask the team uh, gently if they're all sitting down, because it's the best position to receive bad news. This round is inspired by those heart-rending TV moments that spell doom, disaster and misery. The death of Tiffany, the Emma Dale Inferno, the theme tune to You've Been Framed. <laughs> Julian, your team to go first this evening. You will shortly see a dramatic TV clip taken from a well-known programme. Your job is to speculate what the bad news is likely to be in this poignant moment from all creatures great and small. Look at this. See those swellings there? And it's here. And on some of your other pigs, I'll be bound. Bad news, is it? I'm afraid so, Mr. Duggleby. What do you think he might be leading up to? Yeah. Is it to um, tell Mr. Beckham it's a multiple birth? <laughs> And you applaud that, do you? <laughs> okay, so what's your, your answer going to be? Oh, we have to be specific. You have to be incredibly specific. It can't just be that they're a bit poorly. Mm. <laughs> well, you're on the white lines, but I think anyone could have got that. Oh, well, do you know about... I don't, the only thing I know is swine fever, but you think it's... Is it a foot and mouth? Do, do, do pigs have foot and mouth disease? It's it really is a gathering of great minds, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's a sort of swine of a question. And, uh, oh, dear. Go on, what's your answer going to be? Uh, foot and mouth. Foot and mouth. Is that what you're going with, Captain? Swine. <laughs> Let's see just oh, how close you are. I'm afraid so, Mr. Duggleby. I have to telephone the Ministry of Agriculture. Tell them I have a case of suspected foot and mouth disease. <laughs> uh, the bad news was, of course, that the pig had foot and mouth. All Creatures Great and Small was an expensive show to make. During the shooting of the first series alone, Christopher Timothy lost 48 wristwatches. <laughs> Jack's team now, and we have a clip for you lot from EastEnders. It's a girl. It's not her fault. She's, um... She's innocent. She... She's lovely. It's me. It's me. I'm the one. Oh, if anyone knew... You see, the thing is, um... <laughs> what do you think could be his, uh, the burden, the heavy load he's carrying? The thing, the thing, the thing is, I'm a, I'm a car salesman in EastEnders and I really want to be a surgeon on Holby City. <laughs> We do have the real answer if you'd like it. Well, I don't know. Let uh, me give it to Steve first. Jack, we'll, we'll, we'll have a go first. It's your question. Very much, <laughs> well, I didn't know if you didn't finish dressing this evening. If you were going to give it on to I'm not going to go on that. I've just undone my tie a little. That's all I've done. Um, to make well, him look hard. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the first to know. <laughs> I think we witnessed a beautiful moment of coming together just there. I think he explains in this, I think it's is when he's fallen in love with Bianca um, and he finds out that it's actually his daughter. Well, he's not his daughter. He's not his daughter. Okay, let's check your answer with the original. It's this girl. <sighs> she's 
She's my daughter. of course the moment when David Wicks phoned the Samaritans to confess his unnatural desires for his daughter. Unfortunately he got the East Anglian Samaritans whose advice was GET IN THERE SON! <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh, I enjoyed that so much I think we'll do some more. Um, Julian to go first. We have a clip from the fine children's programme Pingu just for you. Struck an unexpected chord with the audience. I suppose it's bad news if you ejaculate out of your cheek. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and so quickly too. <laughs> I think they're meant to be plasticine tears. No, oh. it's sweat. sweat. Is it sweat? sweat. Well, yeah. it stimulates. It's not the other fluid anyway. No. I've never, I've never seen this program. Oh, it's lovely. I've seen it 155 times. Really? Yeah. So do you know what happens next? Do. What language do they do they speak in? Pingu. Oh. Right. <laughs> It's Geordie, isn't it? That's why we didn't understand it, didn't we? It's very, very, very dramatic because Pingu's trapped in there. Right. And they have to, it's really serious. And they have to sort of lift the thing up. That's why he's sweating. This is every week or this particular episode? <laughs> <laughs> Just this one. But Pingu's very naughty. So he's in there and he's lifting it up and getting Pingu out. And why, about, why was he going like that? Because <laughs> he's lifting up the thing, so you have to oh, do oh. it, and it makes him sweat. Oh, right. You see? Okay, let's let's see if you're right. Sorry, Jack Steen, it's it to you now <laughs> from an edition of Noddy, excitingly entitled The Missing Sixpence. Good morning, Carl. Milko. Milko. Morning, Mr. Milko. Isn't it a lovely day? It may be a lovely day for you, Noddy. It's a sad one for me. A sad day? I've lost. <laughs> what do you think the sad Milko's lost? I've lost 20 customers this morning because you keep talking to me, you dozy git. <laughs> I can see you entering into the spirit of children's <laughs> programming. <laughs> I've lost all self-control, now I'm going to strangle you, you bastard. <laughs> what is it about poor Noddy that has such anger in men? I think the clue was in the question, wasn't it? The, the missing, missing sixpence. sixpence. <laughs> Maybe. I've what? lost Maybe and we've what? got to guess what it is he's lost. He's going to say, oh, I've got sixpence, can you help me find it? And so Noddy, being a helpful chap, find goes about it. looking for it. Let's see if you're right. I've lost my special watch. The one my dairy gave me for delivering milk every day for years and years. Oh, dear. He fooled you with the sixpence, You gave me you will, of course, be kicking yourselves. Milko had, of course, lost his watch. The programme Noddy has been sold to America, where it's now called Sex in the City. <laughs> and a quote from the Noddy website, fact file, you can tell when Noddy is coming by the parp, parp, parp of his horn. <laughs> so I'm delighted to be able to give you these scores at the end of that round. Um, Jack, you're lagging behind, I'm afraid, with a meagre three points. Julian and co, you're striding purposefully towards a bold future with a magnificent six. Our next round is all about talent shows, the great TV institution where you, the general public, have the opportunity to decide to watch something else. Fame is a fickle mistress, you think it's a one-to-one -one relationship, and then you find she's been seeing Darren Day. <laughs> We've got to show our teams three of the many suitors who try to catch your eye via the TV talent show. One of them, unbelievably, is still working, and not at McDonald's, as you might expect. It's the team's job to work out which one it is. Our first turn is called The Hart Family. They appeared on New Faces way back in 1976. Oh, Lord. Someone
someone put a ruler between the teeth, she's having a fit. I've often wanted what the female orgasm looks like. <laughs> Well, it's nothing like that, I can tell you. Okay, act number two is a young talent by the name of Spencer Hicks. He appeared on Opportunity Knox back in 1978. <gasps> oh, it's Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> oh, no. oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Horrible. This is what happened to children before PlayStations were invented. <laughs> it is, it's like a grotesque parody of a child. It's deeply tragic, isn't it? Oh, dear. <gasps> I've got it. He doesn't look at yeah. It's a bit like Charlie Chaplin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's number two. And your final act is a man by the name of Mel the Dancer. Mel appeared on New Faces in 1978. <laughs> oh. First time I've seen someone wearing a Vionetta as a shirt. <laughs> Losing my timing this late. In my career And where are the clowns? There are to be clowns South of Scargo <laughs> <laughs> Your task now is you have to tell me who you think is still working and indeed appearing very soon at Hainault Community Centre <laughs> Is it the family heart with the triple talent bypass? Is it Mel Dancer? A man still wanted for the murder of that song, or is it Spencer Hicks who achieved the impossible? He was even less funny than Charlie Chaplin. What do you think? I don't think anyone checked that that microphone was earthed actually before she started singing. <laughs> I think Speed, Speed was very popular in the same. Oh, she was. Uh, she's. She's very. She used to sing from a very early age, and she was um, so small that she had to be stood on a washing machine to begin with, and it never wore off at a point. <laughs> The Charlie little, Chaplin, the little boy. Had was no playing Charlie Chaplin was Master Spencer. Yeah, you know, when Charlie Chaplin came to London in 1960, there were so many fans in London they had to close off Piccadilly Circus. That's lovely. But no, it was never happened. They closed. We the don't want London a theatrical though. anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> and someone once said that Hit he looked like Hitler with a stick. <laughs> I thought I thought I did. Is that the punchline? That's the only one. Well, that boy, uh, he had no. Discernible yeah, talent. Was, yes. <laughs> he was that was he was a mime. A mau mau. Mime. A mime. mime. A mime act. It's a north south thing going well. on. It was a, she's saying it was a mime act. Mm. Then there was um Mel Dancer. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Send in the hygienist. <laughs> I, I would say it's it's Master Spencer no. Hicks. You think That's Master what Spencer? I'm saying. I'm going against Jane here. Team Captain decision is final, so you're going with Master Spencer Hicks. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, well, we don't, I don't think he's even alive, that boy. didn't look well. <laughs> I, um, I think Mel D. We think he's still doing the Mr. Mel Dancer. But I'm yeah. ready to make Mel D. Dancer, Spencer Hicks. OK, the answer is... Mel Dancer! Oh. 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 Mr. Mel Dancer, and he was good enough to send us this personal message. Oh, oh he's still alive. Oh, good. <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. You know, when I sang Sending the Clowns on New Faces, I didn't have you and the team in mind. And thinking about it, who did? Cheers. Oh, please. Good on him. A nice chat. Consumed with bitterness and hatred. <laughs> okay, well, uh, the scores at the end of that round means that Jack's team, you're still way behind with three points. Julian, you're roaring into the lead with nine points. Thanks very much. To many old people, TV is more than just a source of entertainment. It's a friend. But unlike most of their friends, it doesn't need its neighbours looking in whenever there's a cold snap, or forget where it's put its glasses or keys, or complain about the noise or traffic, young people's music, and inquire innocently why that lovely Dale Winton hasn't got married yet. <laughs> their love of this underrated medium I'll is inspired... <laughs> of this underrated medium has inspired our round Granny Knows Best, where we invite the differently young to apply the wisdom of their years to today's television. It's for our teams to decide who or what show they're on about. The sooner they guess the right answer, the more points they'll get. There's ten points hanging on this first one. Guys, can you tell me what Bill, David and Margaret here are talking about? It could become very boring, in my opinion. The producers seem to provide him with some excellent talent to have on the thing. Why they lower themselves to go on his programme, I don't know. 
something he says shine off and he fancies himself and I'm, I'm saying this is I'm speaking to my mind what they say <laughs> and they said oh well no we don't like him and something is sarcastic I mean they say this is what I'm getting from them they say always oh, sarcasm don't like him and, and he comes out with some remarks what they don't like <laughs> It is this show, isn't it? It's something, something. <laughs> Des O'Connor. Des O'Connor. You can't copy what I say. No, oh, I you're thought wrong, that as You're well. wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Okay. So that tells that. Here they are describing the same person. Can anyone get it for five points? He's developed now rather one-sided. It's really his features are lovely. And I'll tell you what makes him look better. When he's got navy blue on. <laughs> it's outstanding. Really outstanding in his navy blue clothes. He, he has some shows that you can ask him any question at all you think of. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> him. no? Yes. No, oh, well. <laughs> I think those two are watching different TVs. <laughs> okay, well, well, for five points now, what do you think? Any, any guesses? Barrymore. Yeah. yeah. So that's an and you can't oh, say that as well. Okay, so you're, going, you're going for yeah, Barrymore. Is that your, that's, your, that's your answer, Barrymore? I'm going for Barrymore. Yeah. 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 Bob Monkhouse? Yeah. Yeah. Bob Monkhouse? Mm, think it makes so you're saying Bob Monkhouse? <laughs> yeah. You're saying Lord Barrymore? Yeah. yeah. It was, of course, Bob Monkhouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob Monkhouse, the older statesman of British comedy, who this year celebrated a famous anniversary, is finally the same age as his material. <laughs> Bob's very well known for his showbiz tan, which makes him appear curiously orange. Interestingly enough, in nature, orange is a warning. <laughs> OK, here's one final group of oldsters. She used to have a nice audience and all that, and talk about different things, about what's going on and what's not going on. She can be very attractive, yeah. In the, the last two or three serials she didn't see, she used to do a lot of talking. Ever such a lot of talking. She never chased me, it was perhaps a pity, but... <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think that might be? Did that lady say she never chased me? I think the man said. Oh, the man. You know, the we are talking. Hey, John, you see, talk. you should ask Bush first, though, no, because you, know, you can ask him first. Don't, 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 don't get all wowdy and northern on me. I can have it sent back. Right, 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 right. Listen, just calm down. There's plenty for everyone. <laughs> plenty to go around. Yeah, well, ask, yeah. ask Bush a question. There's points galore for the taking if you can only get some right. You're giving them right. But they're getting it right. That's the way the games work. They get it right, they get a point. If you get one right, you get a point. You're going to end up with a smack on this show. You, know, you have been salted two Geordies, and that is, that is a dangerous thing to have done. Smack him. I'm just trying to... I will ask <laughs> you. Well, that looks good. <laughs> Saying smack him, you're like one of those gypsies you're on holiday. <laughs> smack him. You'll be singing rowdy songs in a minute and pouring beer over people's heads. Yeah. We're still here. What do you think? Well, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to settle a dispute over we're with the Northerners. We're still here, so we're not saying... You know, right, what do you think? Who do you think it might be? Well, Nigel... I don't know. I don't know. Shut up. Yet. Don't touch me. <laughs> He does keep talking. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I'm just going to say what you no, say. No, 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 don't, please don't say that. Please don't say that. If I, I'll, give you, I'll give you anything you want if you don't say that. <laughs> but I, I could be wrong and it could be very foolish. So let's Are have you? one more. Oh, God, sorry. Have a guess now. I'm going to lie on drugs. <laughs> Sadly, not. He said Thora Heard. So that's your answer, Thora Heard. And your answer was Thora Heard. Okay. You're going to love me for this. The answer is indeed Thor or her. <laughs> well done, you. Yeah. Well done. Thor or her was, of course, made a dame in the same year as Nigel Hawthorne. She always gets the plum rolls in those Alan Bennett plays. And you want to know how? Two words. Casting couch. <laughs> So, the scores at the end of that round sees uh, Jack Steve still back there with, well, not so bad, three points. <laughs> You're way in the lead, 24 points. Oh, yeah. All of which brings us to Channel Hopping, the game that combines a heady combination of theme tunes, props and the age-old art of mime. People say that mime isn't useful, but let me tell you, if you're trapped in an imaginary glass box, as I have been several times, you'll curse the day you turn down a place at Chelmsford's premier école de mime.
Jack will be the first one to go. Uh, Tim and Jane, please make your way now to the specially made TV behind me. When Jack presses his remote, everyone but Jack will hear the signature tune to a well-known show. Let me give you the remote there. Jack won't hear them because he will be wearing his standard issue set of deluxe head muffs. His teammate's job is to convey to him the identity of the show in question. Is that clear? Jack, muffs on. <laughs> he has 90 seconds to identify the five shows whose theme tunes we will shortly hear. So if you're ready, let the channel hopping commence. <laughs> and Pat. Postman Pat. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes. French Beans. That popular show, French Beans. Uh, <laughs> picking Beans. Oh, Picking... I don't know. Pop Black. <laughs> uh, uh, where are they gone? Yeah. <laughs> well done, Jack. Well, thank you. Well done. Well done, Jane. Well done, Tim. And while Julian's teammates are making their way to the TV, I can reveal that your team have scored four titles there. So four out of possible five. Well done. So I'll tell you the one. I'll tell you the one you didn't get. I've just been told. It was Mr. Bean. Of course, yeah. it was Mr. Bean. And beautifully done, if I may. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, nice. okay really, Julian, if really you'd like to put your head in these muffs over there. <laughs> There's the remote from you. Okay, when you're ready, if you're in place, okay, start hopping. It's one way of shutting Nigel up, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is that Jimmy Saddle? Jim will fix it. <laughs> Lorraine's going down. <laughs> Upstairs, downstairs. Um. Oh, doctors. Angels. Angels. Let's go back to the one I didn't get. Come on, please. No, I've done that one. No, it's the one. Yeah. It's the one I No, it's the one I couldn't get yet. Is that that one? Go to number five. Have I got this one? Sorry. <laughs> Number five. Uh, shopping. Supermarket sweep. Yeah. Go on, just kill him. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, out of time. Good point. Very good effort. Very good, very good, very good work. <laughs> okay, well, you got four out of the possible five titles. You did very well. Can you guess the one you didn't get? Do you know what it is? Um, you were doing that. And fighting. Fighting. Oh, gladiators. Yeah. Yeah. Gladiators. Oh. There you go. It's gladiators. So the scores at the end of that round mean that Jack's team have uh, made some progress. It's obviously not enough. You've got seven points. Oh. Julian, you're still just a tiny bit ahead of them with 28 points. <laughs> Well, 
Time for one more round, as Gazza said to Chris Evans at breakfast time. Yes, it's catchphrase. It's a quick-fire round in which I'll be giving the first part of a well-known TV catchphrase you're saying. The team's buzzing with the full answer. They've got 90 seconds to complete as many as possible. Are you all ready? Here we go. Postman Pat. Postman Pat. Postman Pat. Postman Pat. And he's... Uh, his life is dull. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct, but it's not what I'm after. Anyone? Black and white TV license. No, 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 I can chase it. Well, for the black point, he's black and white cat. Yeah, well, no, you didn't get it, you threw it away. Okay, John Inman, uh, his catchphrase was, I'm not interested in Mrs. Slocum's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> always wanted to say that. <laughs> He's been you know, years waiting to say that line. <laughs> but when the charmer speaks, even pussy has a quality ring to it. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free, well done, okay. Bart Simpson, eat my... Shorts. Eat my shorts, for point, well done. Richard Wilson, uh, he had the catchphrase, I don't, I don't... I don't believe... I, I don't... I did duck patrol. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... Oh. I don't... Please put me out of my believe bloody misery, will you? I don't believe it. Well done. Lloyd Grossman. Oh, I can do Lloyd quite good. So who let that twat in the house? <laughs> so, so who who so he would live in a house like So who live in a house like this? That's correct. Well done. It's like he's in the room, isn't it? Frank Carson. Ertra. Ertra. It's a joke. Very good. Ertra. I thought it was, it's there, though. It's the way I... No. 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 Well, actually, you know what, though? I would, it's uh, a cracker. It's a cracker, well done. Uh. That's it. Time's up, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, what an exciting end to the programme that might one day prove to be. Um, that makes the final scores as follows, my friends. I think you know. Well, 11 points, but That's you fall bravely and well, and you can be proud of yourself. And maybe one day your grandchildren will tell oh, stories about you. <laughs> <laughs> but why in the lead, of course, the most elegant and beautiful man on television, Julian, led his team to victory 30 magnificent points. This show was suitable for vegetarians. It contained no meat whatsoever. <laughs> we leave you with a final glimpse of the breathtaking talent of Mel Dancer, the singing Arthur Scargill. Send in the clown. Thanks for watching. Good night. Losing my timing this late in my career